الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام يقول ربنا عز وجل وإذا فعلوا فاحشة قالوا وجدنا عليها آباءنا والله أمرنا بها قل إن الله لا يأمر بالفحشاء أتقولون على الله ما لا تعلمون قل أمر ربي بالقسط Indeed, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. We praise him and we thank him for his blessings and his grace, his mercy and his favors. We believe in him and put our trust in him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves and from the evil of our actions. For whoever chooses guidance, there is none to misguide him. And whoever chooses misguidance, there is none to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah, whom Allah sent with the religion of truth and with guidance. So that this truth and this guidance will become established in the land over all other religions, although the idolaters detest that. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that a lot is happening in the world these days. I am sure that all of you are aware of the events that are unfolding in Libya. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless our brothers and sisters there and elsewhere. Those who are simply asking for justice and fairness. And we hope that the events of the last 24 hours or so will be a clear warning to every tyrant, every oppressor, every transgressor, every dictator that he or she will one day meet his or her day of reckoning. This is not only at the country level, but also at a societal level, at an organizational level, and as, at a family level. Because oppression and transgression can happen even at the family level level and it does happen so anyone who thinks that they can take advantage of anyone else whether it's their family or a group of people or the country let them know that it, they can only do this for so long eventually that will come to an end for the law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed is that good will always triumph over evil. But closer to home, brothers and sisters, and some of you might be aware of this, is the trial that is unfolding in Kingston, in which a father, his wife, and their son are accused of murdering their three children, three girls, and a fourth person. Now I know the trial has only begun, brothers and sisters, and we don't know for sure whether these individuals are guilty or not guilty. And we hope that the process and their day in court will 
bring about or establish whether they're guilty or not guilty. But one of the things that stands out very clearly, that is of concern to all of us, is that quite often, brothers and sisters, we do things and we justify them in the name of religion. When Islam is innocent of many of these things. Based on wiretaps that the police have conducted, they have uh, recorded the father as saying that these girls, his daughters, have dishonored their religion and that they have dishonored Islam and that he believes this was the right thing to do. This, brothers and sisters, is what I believe it is, is the greatest dishonor that an individual can do. Violating a whole set of legislation and principles. Doing something that is clearly wrong and still believing that it's okay. So it is time, brothers and sisters, we realize, we wake up and we realize that we should not blame our bad behavior on Islam or on what God has ordered. Because with absolute clarity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that absolutely He has not ordered anything that's wrong. So he tells us in Surah Al-A'raf, describing the attitude of some people, وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً And when they do something that's wrong, that's sinful, that's indecent, their response is, and here they try to justify their actions. قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا آبَاءَنَا Their response is, we have found our fathers doing this. Meaning, this is our culture, this is our tradition, this is our custom. Precisely the excuse that is used over and over and over. It's our culture, it's our tradition. It has to be right. And in addition to that, they claim, Wallahu amarana biha, that Allah has ordered this. This is Islam, this is the religion, this is what Allah has ordered. This is the claim and the justification that people make. But what does God have to say about this, brothers and sisters? In the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ You can't get it any clearer than this, brothers and sisters. Tell them, say to them, surely Allah does not command sinful acts he does not command wrongful things are you saying things about Allah of which you have no knowledge this is a problem that we're afflicted with today where individuals do things that are wrong and then try to justify that in the name of God or in the name of the religion. And so a few people make the majority of us, MashaAllah, look very bad. A few, very few at that, make the vast majority of us as Muslims look bad. From statements they make that have absolutely no basis in Islam, or the Qur'an or the Sunnah. And yet, we now find ourselves having to explain things, having to defend things. قُلْ أَمَرَ رَبِّي بِالْقِسْتِ So on the one hand, Allah does not command anything that's wrong. And to emphasize and drive home that point, Allah says in the next verse, Qul amara rabbi bilqist. Say, my Lord has ordered what? 
qist, that is justice, that which is right. That's what Allah has ordered. And so we have to, especially families, families that might come from such a culture where they view girls in particular and the Western lifestyle that these girls may, may, may like and want to embrace, they see this as dishonoring of the name of the family and the honor of the family. And dragged into this, it's one thing for a person to feel personally dishonored, that's fine. But when you drag religion into the mix, that's different. Because now it is the religion that is being used as a justification for perhaps worse reprehensible behavior. Brothers and sisters, we need to realize that Allah gave us a high level of intelligence for one reason one primary reason and that is to allow each person to make his or her choices no matter how hurtful those choices may be to the parents or anyone else that is why Allah has given every human being a high level of intelligence he will hold them accountable he is the judge not you and I our role and our job is to simply convey the message in word and in deed. So we live the message that we preach. And we leave people to make their choices, even our own children. Now I know this is very difficult for parents. Because parents love their children. It is extremely hurtful for a parent to see a child making choices, heading down a path that the parent considered wrong. A path that will lead to many difficulties. A path that perhaps could very well ruin the life of the child. And not do anything about it. This is very difficult for any parent. Not to do anything about that. And it's important that we try to do something. Mind you. We have an obligation as Muslims let alone that relationship of parents and children. But we have this obligation to encourage that which is right and to forbid that which is wrong, to advise. But we need to understand, we need to know our limitations. We need to know what we're permitted to do and what we're not permitted to do. The life of a human being in fact, any life, even the life of an animal, is considered very precious and sacred in the Islamic perspective. This is why the Prophet ﷺ has forbidden using live animals as target practice. You want to hone your skills in spear throwing or shooting arrows, you use live animals, so as they move around, you're better able to hone your skills at shooting at a moving target, as opposed to a stationary target. The Prophet ﷺ has forbidden this. This is exactly why, brothers and sisters, because of the sanctity of life, of even an animal, let alone that of a human being, that even for food, we are obligated to say God's name at the time we slaughter an animal for food. A legitimate reason for taking the life. Yet, we are obligated to say God's name. Why? Because of the sanctity of life. It is Allah alone who gave that life to, to that animal. And no one has any right to take that life except with a good reason and in the name of the Creator who gave it life. We know the verse of the Quran or the verses of the Quran very well, brothers and sisters. 
in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in no uncertain terms very very clearly perhaps we don't understand the Quran that we read but very clearly has told us about the sanctity of human life in particular we are well aware of the of the verses in Surah Al-Ma'idah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the taking of one human life without a just cause and by the way all of us claim just cause all the time that is our justification we believe it's a just cause but the just cause has been defined by Allah himself the creator and none other so it's not what you and I believe is just it is what Allah the exalted has decreed is the just cause whoever takes a human life without a just cause as Allah says فَكَأَنَّمَا it is as if that person has slaughtered all of mankind this is the level of the atrocity of taking a human life without a just cause of course we also know that Allah has told us that anyone who saves or helps to save one human life it is as if that person or those people have saved all of mankind and yet what do we find that there are individuals because of what they interpret as dishonoring to them and the family's name they violate the sanctity of life that Allah has given to every creature that he has given life to not just human beings and they take matter into their own hands this is wrong brothers and sisters we need to know that it's wrong we need to acknowledge that it's wrong we need to speak out that it's wrong we need to teach our children that it's wrong we need to teach our young people that it is wrong we have to come to grips with the concept and the idea brothers and sisters that it is Allah who will hold people accountable and our role is simply to advise and to guide and then let them make their choice even if it's choices that hurt us when Prophet Nuh alayhi salam is in the boat in the ark and the water is rising he sees his son outside he tells his son as Allah tells us in the Quran Qala ya bunayya irka ma'ana he said, my son, come and ride with us. The son responded. He made a choice. The son made his choice. And Nuh alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah, had no choice but to allow his son to make his choice. He's a grown human being. Force is not acceptable. So he asks his son to come and ride with him. Although he knows that his son chose not to believe in the message he was sent with, his son responded by telling him, He said, I will climb a mountain. I will take refuge on a mountain. It will protect me from the water. He didn't think that the water could rise to that level. But his father, Nuh alayhi salam, said to him, Qala la asim al min amrillah. He said to him, Today there is no protection against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happened? Allah says, Fahala baynahum al mawju, wahala baynahum al mawju, fakana min al mughraqeen. A wave separated the two of them, Nuh alayhi salam, in the boat, in the ark, and his son in the water. And his son drowned. I am sure, brothers and sisters, and I'm sure you will agree as well, that as a messenger of Allah and as a parent, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam would have done the best job in raising his own children. No one would doubt this. 
Yet he had to come to grips with this reality that once people grow up and they mature, they now become responsible for themselves. Allah will hold them accountable for their choices. Of course, I must add that as parents, when our children are young and small, we have an important role to play in educating them and nurturing them so that when they mature and they grow up and they are now held accountable for their choices, they have enough training and enough knowledge and education and nurturing to hopefully make the right choices. That much we are responsible for. That is our wajib. Our wajib, our obligation is not to judge them and then execute them when they do something we believe is wrong. Our obligation is to give them when they're much younger than that age, the knowledge and the training and the nurturing and the bonding so that they will make good choices. So the question we must ask ourselves, we're upset at our grown children who are making choices that are bad. And I'm in no way supporting the, the young people in making bad choices. But as parents, we need to ask ourselves, did I really train my children well, my son or my daughter? At the age when I had the chance to be a positive influence on them in terms of teaching them and training them and educating them, making them strong in character, sowing the seeds of consciousness of Allah in their hearts, love of Allah in their hearts, love of the Prophet ﷺ in their hearts, love of the way of life of Islam in their hearts, highlighting for them the beauty and the wonderful nature of Islam as a way of life. When I had the chance and the opportunity to do this, did I do it? That's what I need to ask myself. And not worry about the choices the child will make when they grow up and they mature. That is a fact of life and a reality of life we must come to face with. And it is time we stop blaming our bad behavior on, the, on, on Islam or on the religion. And we realize that a lot of what we do and what we think is Islam is, as Allah says in this ayah in Surah Al-A'raf, it is simply the culture or the tradition. And if it's wrong, it must be let go of. You and I must come to grips with this fact that right is right and wrong is wrong. And once we have knowledge of what is right, how can we still then do what is wrong and try to justify that by saying it's our tradition, it must be right? It takes strength, brothers and sisters. It takes courage, it takes knowledge to do this. But this is exactly what we need to do. For assuredly, without any doubt whatsoever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not and has never ordered anything that's unjust or wrong. And the Quran clearly and loudly proclaims this. So those who claim otherwise, they are wrong. They either did not read the Quran or they did not understand the message that they read or they are of course deliberately corrupting the message of the Quran in order to justify themselves and their, their actions. It is time brothers and sisters, we begin to reevaluate our knowledge of Islam our understanding of what is Islam and what is not Islam. It is time we, we research, we learn more about the Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And it is time we see deviation and wrongdoing for what it is, for what they are. They are wrong. They have nothing to do with religion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not ordered anything that's wrong or sinful on the one hand. And on the other hand, He has ordered only that which is right and that which is just. قُلْ أَمَرَ رَبِّي بِالْقِسْتِ 
Say, my Lord has ordered kist, which is justice, fairness, the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us, brothers and sisters. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand His message. And may He inspire us and motivate us not only to preach that message, but perhaps more importantly to live by that message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our good deeds, forgive for us our mistakes, and keep us firm on the straight path. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimina min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoorul rahim. Allahumma khfir. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhin astafa wa ba'd. Let us send peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah. For Allah has commanded us to do so in the Quran when He said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabih wa attabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmi al-deen وعنا معهم بمنك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكفرة والملحدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين والمجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم أفرغ عليهم صبرا وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصرهم بنصرك وأيدهم بتأييدك وأمدهم بمددك واجعل لهم من ضيقهم مخرجا اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا واجعلهم هداة مهتدين لا ضالين ولا مضلين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب سميع مجيب دعوات وقوموا إلى صلاتكم